Hey YouTube, um, I was planning on uploading a different video, but this kind of just struck my head and I think it's going to be a really beneficial video for you. So I'm going to be posting a lot more gameplays in the future and some other awesome videos as well. We're almost at YouTube partner. So if you want to like this video, sub as well, tell some friends, get this video out to as many people as you can. This video is going to be me breaking down how I set my lineup in ranked seasons. As you all know, or some of you might not know, the new rank seasons drops. It's noon, or it's 12.07 for me right now. The new rank seasons drops in about uh, five hours or so. So if you want to make World Series for the first time, if you want to at the very least get the Division Series, Championship Series, you just want to be better in ranked, allow these tips to kind of tell you how to set your lineup, how to do different things like that. I'm not even streaming right now. I'm getting follows on uh, Twitch as well. That's pretty cool. Let's get in the lineup here. What you're looking at on the screen is my God Squad lineup. Uh, now, tomorrow, I might move a couple guys around, but let's talk about really quick how I kind of set my lineup here. So first of all, you see on the, on the lineup screen how it goes right, left, right, left, right, left, switch hitter. So there's two reasons to this. So one with the not the new addition because it happened last year, but uh, the addition of the three batter minimum, you can't just have a specialist reliever anymore, right? So the reason why I set my lineup like this is for late game. I know if he brings in Chapman, if he brings in Gossage, if he brings in like name your crazy reliever. I'll be able to have someone in that three at bat span with an advantage. So obviously if you watching have a lot of switch hitters, I would recommend switch hitters. If you know you're like me and you struggle lefty lefty, then pairing uh, guys that have good stats versus uh, like versus righty. So it bounces back. That'll help you out as well. And then another thing that you want to do when you set your lineup is you want to set your lineup to your strengths. So let's say you're like me. Pretend everybody's like me for a sec. I know that I clobber righty righty. So what I mean by righty righty, right-handed pitcher on the mound, right-handed batter at the plate. And a couple of my guys in my order are exactly right for that job. So I understand that not everybody is Mike Trout. And I'm not saying, I'm not making this video to tell you to go and take your mom's credit card and put a ton of subs down. You don't need Mike Trout. I'm fortunate that I have him. I sold like basically my whole team to get him, but I'm using Trout as an example because I know that I love facing righty righty. So if you notice Mike Trout, for example, is not as good versus lefties, but that arm hand advantage, like I know I can hit lefties with a right handed bat. That's why Trout is perfect for me because he has those righty righty splits. And the same thing goes for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. So Vlad's stats are not as good versus lefties, but as of facing a lefty, you can kind of see the ball a little bit better on the hand. I would prefer to have those better stats with the righty righty guys. That's why Vlad is the way he is on my team. So one of the last things I wanted to bring up before we went into the pitching rotation, um, I talked about how I set guys righty lefty, righty lefty, so I can give myself a good hand advantage um, with like just good power bats. How you should set your order. Um, I think you should set your so let's say like I have Mike Trout right you should all have Byron Buxton if you don't I highly recommend picking him up but you should have your number one hitter be a guy like Mike Trout or a guy like Byron Buxton your number one hitter should be a guy with high power high contact and high speed because you might be like shouldn't Trout be your three hitter because what if people are on base well, the lineup turns over, and I would love to have people on base for my number one hitter, and as the math works out, your number one hitter gets the most at-bats of anyone on your team every single game, so obviously, I want Trout to have as many at-bats as possible, because he's the best bat in my order, so if you don't have Trout, I would put Buxton one, if you don't have Buxton, Ryan for Buxton's car, because he's amazing, um, but I would put like your best speed, power-hitting guy in your number one spot, and then... Talking about the uh, uh, the lineup as well, I like having really good, like guys that I feel really comfortable with in the eight hole. So um, another philosophy you could do that I used to do is bat the pitcher eight. I don't really like doing that this year. Um, I haven't really found a benefit to it, so I stick with the pitcher in the ninth spot. But um, I think you should have a pretty good contact hitter at the bottom of your order because when that pitcher spot is coming up, it's nice to have a man on base because then you kind of get your opponent a little flustered thinking about are you bunting? Are you doing a bunt and steal? Are you taking a strikeout? Like you want to get in your opponent's head. So I put someone I'm comfortable with uh, in Frico Gooder. I call him Frico because I love him uh, in the eight hole. And as far as the bench goes, um, you want to have a good mix of lefties and righties and you want to have guys that you're really comfortable in, right? So I have Dom Smith, I have Josh Donaldson, Kirby Puckett, uh, Ricky for speed, 
and Corey Seager. How I would set your bench is two lefties, two righties, and a speed guy. My speed guy happens to be a right-handed bat as well. The best world possible is you putting a speed switch hitter here. So that way you give yourself a chance to facing like lefties or righties of the pen with potentially three righties or three lefties, depending on what he does in the bullpen against you. But at the very least, you want to have guys that are lefty, lefty, righty, righty, and you want to go with your best bats you feel comfortable with. So going through uh, really quickly, some good budget guys for your bench. Uh, D Gordon is a part of the Marlins collection. It should not cost you hardly any subs to complete that collection. But uh, D Gordon, a great bench card off your bench for lefties or for facing righties with a lefty bat. Another pretty much must on your bench should be Nelson Cruz, uh, the boomstick as we call him here in Minnesota. I think he's, I mean, he's definitely one of the best bench bats you can have. And you always want to make sure when you're looking at putting live series cards in your bench, that you want to make sure you're playing with the live series advantage. Like see the Cruz got plus 14 today. This is something you should be doing daily when you log on to the game. Go and check if you have some silver or budget gold cards that might be playing up like crazy. Let me show an example of that here. So just as an example, if you're just starting out and you don't have the tops now, Ryan McMahon, you can pick up the bronze Ryan McMahon for like, what, 500 stubs? Like 100 stubs. And you can get a guy with plus 16 contact and power today versus righties. So for example, that would put him at 70 contact and it would put him at about... Uh, how's my Minnesota math here? A little under uh, 90 power. And if you're just starting on a ranked, this is where you're going to be using this card. And with starting on a ranked, that means you're playing on all-star. The PCIs are bigger. Uh, henceforth, Ryan McMahon, a great option. Not as best of an option if you're playing on Hall of Fame or Legend like I do. And some of you watching the video might be, but there's a good budget card there. And probably the best bench bat of them all, as far as budget bench bats go, is this catcher, Robinson Chirinos. Um, I love what they've done this year with silver and gold cards that have become viable bench bats. Um, 81 Jake Lamb is another good lefty bench bat that I like, but this Chirinos, obviously no speed, but that 117 contact versus uh, lefties on Hall of Fame or Legends and make his PCI gigantic and a very good reason for you to be using Chirinos on your bench. Now, looking at my rotation and my bullpen here, so uh, as, as we talk about like free cards, uh, Sixto and Corbin should definitely be in your rotation. Corbin, a part of the monthly program. You probably don't have DeGrum. I pulled him, luckily. I'm very happy for that. Valenzuela, I really hope you held on to this card if you sold him the first inning program because he is expensive now and continuing to climb because one of the things about Valenzuela was when he first came out I think everybody including me thought that he was not very good and it, we've come to find out that he's arguably the best starter in the game you look at my stats I started off awful with him but I just played a game on Legend the other day with Valenzuela and he was absolutely remarkable so if you have Valenzuela put him in your rotation do not sell him he's a G as far as some other budget relievers go uh, Joe Musgrove the tops now card I thought at first glance this card wasn't that great but after looking at his pitch repertoire I'll move me out of the way there. There we go. Um, slider, cutter, and a sinker. You love to have those three pitches on any card in your, in your rotation or bullpen. So Musgrove, a very nice budget starter there as well. Uh, Nathan Devaldi, not great. Dylan Cease actually has crazy hitting stats, if I recall, right? Well, not crazy, 70 contact. But Dylan Cease, top style card came out. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have a sinker. But uh, I want to talk quickly about my philosophy on looking at pitchers. So I like to look at guys in my rotation that have a good amount of, uh, I'm going to put me, where was I at? Like right here. Sounds good. Uh, so I like to look for guys that have, um, like slider cutter sinker. You want guys that have a lot of different break. You want guys with a disparity, disparity in velo. You might be like, what in the world do you mean by disparity in velo? Take a look at Bob Feller. For example, you see how he tops out at 98 and he could go as low as 80. Um, I love that mix in velocities. So that's why Bob Feller's a great card. But just closing on the philosophy on your rotation, um, I have uh, just my five best guys. I don't care about lefties or righties in my rotation. My five best guys right now are Corbin Burns, DeGrum, Sixto, Bob Feller, and Fernando Valenzuela. Um, I've enjoyed Tanana a bit. Um, other than that, uh, Barrio should be getting a sinker soon. Um, he might be getting a sinker soon. I, I, SDS told me he was getting one, but they haven't really responded yet. But we might be getting one on Barrios. I'm not sure if he gets one. That'll be a decent card. But 
closed with the bullpen. I set it up this way so it's easier for my eyes to remember. This year, we have a new addition to the bullpen in that there's eight people in there. Last year, you had seven people in the bullpen. I still would recommend going three lefties and then now five righties this year instead. Um, last year, it was three lefties, four righties, but you want to make sure you have three uh, lefty relievers. You want to make sure you have five righty relievers. Um, this Mariano Rivera is going for a ton of stubs now, but Mo is one of the best relievers in the game as he is every year. Rob Dibble, a part of the NL Central um, TA path, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, someone correct me in the comments. It might be the Reds. I'm not sure, but Rob Dibble, a stud. This Houston Street, I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with. He has absolutely no velo on his pitches, but he's decent. I'm um, a couple other uh, budget righties if we want to talk about those for a second. A couple other budget righties that you could use for your ranked seasons grind is this Shane Green. Uh, like we mentioned before, sinker, cutter, slider, the three things I want in a reliever and a pitcher. I have them all with Shane Green. James Karinczak is very, very interesting. Um, last year, Karinczak was awful because curveballs were awful, but now this year, curveballs are a lot better. So I am going to give Karinczak some play on this ranked seasons run starting later today. I would recommend you do as well. I think having a high fastball with good off-speed break on the curveballs is very very interesting we'll see how this all works here but uh karen shack kind of looks interesting and then if you don't have the diamond rule this chapman you still could get the silver chapman for 5,000 stubs um you should already have them already from last br program but if you have it you could pick them up for 5,000 subs in the market another good budget reliever here and i have 31 innings pitch and a 2.87 era with him so obviously i love chapman he's a very good card and talking about more budget guys if you don't have this 78 overall eric gagne eric gagne cards are always really hit or miss it's a really slow curveball a decent fastball vulcan change as well but i like this gagne card in about 15 innings i have a 1.8 era 1.8 ERA with Gagne. So pick up these kind of budget silvers in your rotation as well. Um, obviously, uh, Rasiel Iglesias, the last one to talk about here. His release is just super glitchy. The, the pitches don't look great. Four seam slider, change up two seam. It doesn't look like the sexiest pitch repertoire ever, but he's got an unbelievable release point that on Hall of Fame and Legend is like mind boggling. I can't even fathom keeping up with it. So uh, closing on the bullpen and starting rotation here, I like to have my starters just be my five best guys. I like to have my bullpen be three lefties and five righties. And then one last piece of advice for your rotation. So let's say I'm pitching with Corbin Burns this game and I want to get some guys uh, stamina up. DeGrom is pretty close to being ready to go. So I would say that's good enough for his next start, even though he's not at full energy. So I'm going to actually take him out here. Like Tanana, this is a better example. So Tanana's at full stam. And this is, this is great. Like, you have Corbin Burns, you're starting. But you don't want to waste Tanana being in your rotation because you want to generate more energy for your other starters. So I would take out somebody to fill in someone's stam here. So let, let's say I want to give Musgrove some more play. He's at full stam. Let me find someone who's not. Uh, Barrios is all, Can I find anybody with no stamina here? So Evaldi's got a little bit that he could do. So what I'm basically saying you should do is find out who your starter's going to be for the game and make sure your other four spots are guys that you're warming their stamina up so they'll eventually be ready for their games you'll be playing later on in ranked seasons. I have tips on hitting on my YouTube channel. I hope you check those out to make you a better ranked seasons player or a BR player. I wish you all good luck in ranked seasons this time around. I hope you all make World Series. Comment below how you finish this season, and I'll check in the next one.